so despite having just talked about how the Final Fantasy benchmark is basically pointless right now, we still wanted to put out the last bit of data we had on it before moving on, and that's CPU data. So the primary interesting point here is testing the thread count and the utilization of thread count, which you can specify through command line with the Final Fantasy benchmark. Hence why it's actually, it'd be a great tool if it worked properly. But anyway, uh, we're gonna be testing SMT and hyperthreading a couple of other things today for CPUs. Not doing a whole suite of CPUs because halfway through doing all this data collection is when we realized like, oh, this benchmark's actually not great. So, uh, but I did want to publish what we got before we just move on completely and forget about it till launch. Before that, this video is brought to you by EVGA and their GTX 1080 Ti SC2 video card with ICX technology. The 1080 Ti SC2 has nine thermal sensors spread across the board, which allows you to easily check the cooling performance of the VRAM, the VRM power components, and the GPU. This makes for better noise to performance tuning in software, and you can learn more about the SC2 at the link in the description below. A few notes here before we get started. If you missed it, we have a video about why the Final Fantasy benchmark, we think, is sort of flawed. This comes back to an issue of being uh, optimization on Square Enix side, I think. We talked about this in the article a lot more than the video. There's like six paragraphs at the end of that article talking about how ultimately it comes down to Square Enix, not down to Gameworks, because although Gameworks is implicated in this, and NVIDIA does have a responsibility to clear their name and make sure the developers are implementing their stuff properly, it's still Square Enix who are calling basically every object in the game, which we're working on confirming with more tools, by the way, they're calling it in and rendering it and just loading down the GP resources all the time. So it doesn't matter if it's Gameworks or not. Gameworks objects like Hairworks applied to the Buffalo are particularly impactful and are what tipped us off to this problem because you can toggle Gameworks through an INI hack and run the test in an area with zero Gameworks and you'll still see a performance delta when you turn it on versus off in an A-B test, uh, hence leading us to the discovery that a whole bunch of stuff is being rendered all the time. We're now using another tool called RenderDocs, still learning a lot about it, and we've pulled some of the meshes out from frames that don't contain those meshes in the camera, in the viewport at all. So, uh, yeah, some interesting stuff we're still working on, just out of curiosity at this point. But uh, basically, there's a lot of stuff being drawn, and that means this is actually an awful CPU benchmark as well, because at 1080p medium, we're still bumping into a frame rate limiter on a 1080 Ti at 1080 p 1920 by 1080. Despite the name being a 1080 Ti, it is not actually supposed to stop at 1080p resolution. So uh, it's not a great benchmark. 1080 low, we're still pretty much bumping up against the cap. So it's, it's really just not optimized right now. And if it is, then wow, <laughs> yikes. But yeah, so, um, Let's just let's go through the numbers and you'll see what I mean. We can start this piece by illustrating just how easily the game bottlenecks on the GPU even when we're trying to do a CPU bench. This is at 1080p medium settings for the first chart and we're clearly hitting a bottleneck at around 137 FPS average on the GPU. GPU is a GTX 1080 Ti FTW3. I'm on one of the best gaming cards you can get right now and it's at 1080p medium settings and that's still too much to be a viable CPU benchmark. With these settings, we only start seeing real divergence from high-end parts when we step down to $100 R3 CPUs, for example. So yeah, illustrating the point, this comes back to what we found with Final Fantasy XV's benchmark silent rendering of nearly everything on the map. It's not just Gameworks, it's basically all the 3D objects, like the Buffalo itself, which isn't a Gameworks object. It's the host of Gameworks objects. But here's another example. This is a frame we analyzed from the game where it's the main character on a fishing dock. And even during this frame, the game is still rendering cars that aren't nearby, rendering item chests that aren't in frame or nearby, and rendering large portions of highway that are located miles away. We have another shot where uh, the characters are driving around and we're still rendering, for example, the birds and the iguanas or whatever they are and things that are two minutes further into the benchmark than they are at the current scene. So we're still looking into this, still need to clarify if this is actually stuff that's being drawn uh, or if it's just this utility intercepting these things. And we'll talk about this more later. But anyway, it looks like there's a lot of stuff going on that shouldn't be. 
So after stepping down to 1080p low, we can finally start to plot some actual CPU performance differences. We're still bottlenecking at the high end, but not as flatly as before. With these settings, the Intel i7-8700K demonstrates our point of GPU limitations, overclocked to 5 GHz or stock, we're still bumping up against a rough 174 FPS checkpoint. The GPU utilization is nearly 100% at this point, further illustrating that limitations of usefulness for this benchmark are bound by even GPUs at 1080p low. Anyway, a shining note here is that the game does seem to like threads, but only up to a point. With AMD's R7-1700, we noticed that performance improved with SMT disabled, and we saw performance uplift of 5.1% from the stock R7-1700 to the R7-1700 with SMT off. For the R5-1600X, we observed a 4% performance uplift by disabling SMT, and note also that frame time consistency is not hugely impacted. We are technically plotting a downtrend in low-end frame time consistency, but we can't confidently state whether this is statistically significant or accurate, as the benchmark is simply too inconsistent to establish confidence in that 0.1% low swing. This is further illustrated by the opposite behavior on the R7-1700, where we still saw average FPS performance uplift, but we also saw 0.1% low performance uplift. Relating this back to our previous research with the num threads commands, we believe that the game encounters a point of diminishing returns at around 8 threads. Up until that point, more threads is better. After that point though, we either lose performance from inefficient load balancing across the threads, or we stagnate in performance. This leads to a greater discussion on CPU utilization, for which we also have charts from previous research, because lower utilization is not, in fact, a good thing. There's a misconception that a game utilizing minimal amounts of the CPU means that the CPU has more headroom for background processing. In reality, what this means is that we're load balancing across all the threads inefficiently and losing performance as a result. With any component, you want it to be fully engaged or close to it in any task, and the closer to 100%, the better, because that means if you're able to leverage the component to its fullest potential, not wasting any performance, the background operations that exist should have some native load balancing and the OS should work with them to distribute resources as needed, otherwise you can manually do it. And back to the Final Fantasy 15 1080p low chart, the 7700K and the R5-1400 both demonstrate where disabling hyperthreading or SMT results in a net negative. In these instances, the R5-1400 CPU sees a deficit in average FPS and frame time consistency. The 7700K achieves an inappreciably different average FPS, but has halved 0.1% lows. We attribute this to a four-thread limitation on both devices, which the game really seems to not like. At the low end, highlighting the R3 CPU, the R5-1400, and the 7700K with SMT off, the game does not like working with four threads at all. At the high end, with the R7-1700 and R5-1600X, the extra threads should actually be toggled down to a count of 8 for peak performance. We are uncertain about the 8700K's performance behaviors without hyperthreading because we can't reduce GPU load enough to limit the CPU. Limiting the CPU would require a 480p or some other really low resolution, which enters a realm of becoming a strict academic study and exits any usefulness whatsoever. Looking back at our CPU utilization chart from a few days ago, we can show again that using num threads commands to limit thread utilization does have noteworthy impact. The result is improved or equal performance with half of the R7-1700 threads. Interestingly, despite this game seemingly hitting a point of diminishing returns at 8 threads, it will still attempt to use every thread you give it, just in a less efficient way. Also interestingly, this type of limitation would indicate an IPC bias or a frequency bias in the very least. So when we consider that, but you look at the numbers, Final Fantasy 15 as a benchmark is actually doing pretty well on Ryzen despite having performance behaviors that would typically suggest a frequency bias. So in this instance, we have, for example, an overclocked R7-1700 at 4 gigahertz versus an i7-7700K at 5 gigahertz, and the R7 is still favored by the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark, which is certainly noteworthy and potentially impressive. We'll see what happens as the Square Enix developers continue to refine their game so that it's uh, more than just a 4 gigabyte benchmark. I mean, this is not representative of anything. However, from a CPU performance standpoint, I shouldn't suspect that would change very much 
it seems things would change more on the GPU side with all the rendering issues we're encountering. So from what we're seeing now, especially given one month left, there's no time to refactor the engine or anything like that. Uh, it seems likely that the R7 will in fact retain a pretty good performance advantage in this particular title. You will want to look into the option of running the num threads command. We'll have to revisit at launch, but running num threads equals eight would limit the thread count down to a point where you actually get some more performance than if you let it use all 16. And it will use all 16 if you allow the game to. However, uh, the load balancing is a bit more favorable on eight threads rather than 16. And I guess depending on where you benchmark it, seems to outperform a 7700K uh, when both are overclocked, which is absolutely noteworthy. And uh, the 8700K does outperform both of those devices as it does have both frequency and threads. However, we can't actually pinpoint how high it would go without a GPU bottleneck, without just, without doing 480p or something, which is pointless. So that's kind of where we're, we're stuck now. The 8700K may be doing better than we're seeing on the charts because we just, we don't have a way to know how many more frames it would be drawing if it were unencumbered by the GPU. Uh, very interesting game benchmark anyway from a, uh, an optimization standpoint and usefulness standpoint. I do genuinely like the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark as a tool for testing. I just need it to be better. So we'll see what happens when the game launches. But I think that's more or less the last bit of data. We might talk about it in an Ask GN or some other short video at some point. But for now, that'll wrap up most of the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark stuff. So as always, subscribe for more. Check the other FFXV videos on the channel and go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly, and go to store.gamersnexus.net slash modmat to pick up a mat like this one. They're on back order because we blew through our entire first production run. So thank you to all of you who ordered. That's all for this one. I'll see you all next time.